Hey guys, how are ya? My name is Sound of a Gap and this is The Banner Saga 2. And we are back. And we are in chapter 9 with Bulwark and his clan. So let's just get right into it without further ado. The big question is, can we make it to the next town with only one days of food ration left? Let's find out. <clears throat> ravens in the air as ravens approach. Eh, ravens in the air as ravens approach. Ollie says with a slur. Is that a good sign? The small village ahead looks well fortified, with a few bodies outside the fences being picked clean by the birds. Your caravan moves closer, but stays out of arrow range. Whoever's in there won't be left alone, Volker says. But it could be our best chance for supplies around here. Um, approach the village, stating your needs. You grab the raven banner and advance on the town, dodging a warning arrow. We need supplies, you shout. You know who we are, who I am. A few moments pass before several more arrows zip past you, one grazing your shoulder near an old scar. Uh, begin the raven's song and charge. Yeah, we need food. We definitely need food. We have to. The ravens pick up the song, crooning harmonies which unsettle the villagers as you all rush the barricades on a solid wall of shields and fury. Alright, we already start off with a fight. I think that was fine, actually. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Oh, that's not good. That's totally not good, because we have to break through the barricade before we can go to uh, get to them, and they have two archers and three with um, spears. Okay, so let's rearrange our position here. Uh, first of all, girl, you go a little bit closer to there. She will have to kill one of those archers first. The big guys will have to get, in, to get there. Um, move over here. You go. Wait, I want I want to get between those two. Why can't I do that? Are you kidding? Wait, that's weird. Okay. Um. Then you go there, go here. Go there. Yes, I want him there, that's correct. And then you go here. Why didn't the other thing didn't work? I don't know. So, he will stay here. Um, you can stand behind her, actually. can just stay yeah let's you stay there all right let's just try this how much does this have let's just go here hit that with 11 oh shit clear these fain barricades all of them why was he hitting him <laughs> God damn it! Uh, can we clear this too? Yeah, we can. That's nice. And she could... Wait, let's clear this one. Because I'm pretty sure she can... Just... Hit through that. Yeah, let's hit that. First archer. Ah, my right. Yeah. Okay. If I do tempest, oh, let's try this. Nice. And I hit both. Nice. 
Once again, the guy at the back. And who's next? He, is, he will be next, then it's her turn. Then it's his turn. Okay, that's fine. Let's attack the fence on the left. Okay. Nice hit. Armor breakage, okay. Then you just go here and attack. And you have some linkage, so let's use let's use that. You will hit him. Yeah, I knew it. Armor. Now it's his turn. Then it's his turn. Okay, I have to intimidate her. Or insult her. She goes back. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, okay. He will hit his own people. Now she won't die with that hit. Who did you hit? Uh, what just happened? Yeah, you killed him. I knew it. <laughs> uh, it's his turn. So, first of all, you will do that. Yeah, uh, let, let's take all of it. Kill him. He's in the way. Armor? Yep. Yeah, I knew that. I still can't move with him. So let's just get rid of that. He is hitting him. Okay. Oh, actually, can I? I could kill him, but I don't need to, actually. Um, she's next. Yeah, let's hit her t once again. Big guy. Get in here. Um, no. Yeah, him. Can only do armor damage, that's okay. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Hmm, only 90%. And let's reduce her armor. Although... I could just do that. Wait, only one? Damn it. And you're dead. Five? Are you kidding? Wait, if I go there... Actually, it doesn't matter. Let's just get rid of that fence. You go... Actually, yeah, you go there. Not him. Him. No, they can't hurt me anymore. That's good. Well, okay, maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, I don't want to hurt my own people, so go there. Kill him. Wait, why is he not dead? I thought he would hit him with more than just that little bit. She's 
she is next. Yeah, go there and kill this guy. Who is she hitting? How can she hit with five? She has only two. Doesn't make any sense. Die, woman. Die. You kick down the la- Okay. You kick down the last of the barricades to find a dozen or so remaining villagers huddled together. Some have bows, but no arrows. The others have thrown their blades to the ground. A man steps forward. I I'm Friedrich, the oldest of us, he says. We've been fighting off all types from Ormstahl for two weeks now, just trying to protect what's ours. He looks back at his people and says, You won't find us begging for our lives. Volker pulls you aside and says, They know how to fight, so we'd be stronger if they joined us. You pull out your beard. Or I could make them, them gather food for us, you say. You've got this one chance to join the ravens. You're coming with us without your blades and bows. We're not going to kill you, but we are taking what we need. And the chance they kill us, they die. Okay, let's, let's try to um, let them join us. Out your blades, blades and blows. Yeah, they have to gather some food and supplies. And what? Be your fain slaves? Friedrich turns to his people. Is that how we will be remem remembered? They all shout, Never! And attempt to grab their blades, but you and the ravens cut them all down with practiced ease. I should have known that wasn't really an option, Volker says and walks off to look around. Ten supplies. At least a little bit. Okay, we have supplies for six days. We need still more. Spar, an old wanderer who joined the ravens over half a century ago, points at the tents on the edge of the village. Looks like the merchants are still here. Maybe they were being forced to stick around? Alright. Let's take a look at the heroes. Ollie is injured, he is new. What a seek. What is hers? Axe Storm. The character lobs an axe at his target up to four tiles away, dealing normal strength damage of it if it hits. The character continues to throw until he's deflected or the target is dead. Really? Okay. The first throw has, has a base chance to hit regardless of the target's armor, and each successive throw drops in chance to hit by 10%, but will never go below, below 20%. Okay, interesting. And he has shield wall. Hmm. Not too bad. Um, okay, let's just continue. Some of our heroes are injured and need to rest in camp. A scout, <laughs> a scout points into the distance with a smile on his face. Walking in that direction, you begin to hear the strangest bickering between two Val. Now you've done it, you says one Val with a large shield and spear. Kept on until others heard and came nothing noising about. The other Val glances your way, nods politely, and walks toward you while shouldering his axe. Don't mind my brother, Nocker. He's a warrior. Nocker steps closer and shoves the other Val with his shield. Jut, Val don't have brothers and it's warrior. Volker looks at you <clears throat> with amusement and confusion. None of the other ravens seem to know how to react either. Uh, are you too adult? Not the nicest way to say hello, Nocker says, extending his hand and greeting. And if we were adult, uh, and if we were adult, you'd, you'd add, stepping forward and swatting Nocker's hand, would we have even know it? Nocker says, Well, you wouldn't yet, but I'd know. The spectacle continues, and most of the ravens are now laughing at the absurdity. I'm not sure what you, I'm not I'm not sure what you're after, but we are not sharing food. Yut shakes his head. We're not after food, are we, Nocker? Nocker says, No, well, yes and no. <laughs> Yut agrees. Yes and no, that's right, we'd fight with you. 
Knocker interrupts for you, he means. He means. Yud looks annoyed. Knocker, we'd fight for food, but we'd fight with this lot. Um, you can join if you'll shut up. Thank you, Knocker says, but Yud slaps a hand over his brother's mouth. Several mercenaries snort, trying to hold back laughing. The two vows smile like fools and fall in line. They seem like good lads, and I really hope they will be. Wouldn't mind seeing Ivan fly, if only once more. Oh, where are we now? Remember the last time we saw this fool foul, eh, blood axe? Shut up. Think the ghost of this dead bird has forgiven you for that wing yet? Spar asks. The other ravens, including Folker, look from the broken stone to you in shock. Aye, the old man says. We were here nearly 40 years ago, same spot as now. Only a dozen of us left, to the unkindness then. Better men be by twice than all of you. There's rumbling, but the ravens keep listening. We'd run a job for a man. Fener more like, he says, spitting at the, mom at the memory. He set us up to take the fall for some of his old other deals gone bad. We got surrounded here, and this bear of a Val loses his mind, grabs a tree, a whole tree, and starts swinging. Spar starts coughing, but recovers. Nearly killed us all! But all earrings took a hit like no other, and there you have it. The excited ravens start asking you questions, but Spar is all too happy to answer. Uh... Study the bird-shaped stone. Irings, the god known as the winter bird, stands proudly on an eternal perch of snow and ice. Stories of seasons past, of hunting R Radomir across the summer skies, of creating blizzards while flapping its wings to land in winter, cover the outstretched wings. While walking around the stone, your foot thumbs on something hollow. You clear away some ice and find a wooden box, probably left as some token of faith to a, de to a dead god. Leaving anything behind for the dead is a waste, you say, immediately prying open the box and pocketing the small item within. Yes, something new, a pipe plant. Cold creeps under your keeps under clo cold creeps under cloaks and forces the ravens to huddle together as wind whips around you. Snow begins to blot out the worm scale mountains in the distance and you are forced to call for an early camp. Rising from your sleep, you begin pacing, occasionally drumming your fingers on the top of the large cart. A motion in camp draws your attention. Walking towards it, you hear groans and see Falker's shield rising and falling erratically among some furs. Humans! You snort, but the shield flips away, revealing a dredge grunt staring up at you. Stepping back, you bump into another dredge. Looking around the entire raven camp is a swarm of stone-armored bodies desperately reaching for you. When your axes lash out through nothing, you realize you were dreaming. An unexpected sadness swells in you, like you've let everyone down. I didn't even know he could feel sadness like that. A few of your ravens are watching you, smirking, but your growl makes them look away. You decide to walk the perimeter alone while everyone else slowly awakens. Around to hear you yelling! A harsh voice reaches your ears, followed by the laughter of several others. Your abrupt halt alerts Folker, who immediately signs uh, signals the ravens to fan out and draw their weapons. Investigate, yeah. Let's see what is happening here. Over the next rise, a group of ten haggard fighters and a few Vals surround 
half a dozen peasants and a broken wagon. The woman spots you and shouts, Help us! But a, but a punch to the stomach drops her to the snow. The fighters turn, ready to fight. Uh, okay, so they have a black banner. They are the ravens. Um, let's be mean. Just give us what's in the wagon. Ha! One man says. We were going to eat what's in that wagon when we finished with these folks. We're starving. Run away now or die. That's the Raven Banner, brother, another man says. This ain't the fight we want. The others agree and the leader resigns to backing away slowly. A few Ravens follow them a ways while you deal with the women and wagon. Thank you, the woman who was punched earlier says. I'm safer. I know you don't want us around, but if you're heading toward Bindal, we'll follow your path. Um. Fine, but your food is ours. Payment for saving... Payment for saving you, you say. The woman nods her understanding, but to your surprise, the wagon is nearly empty. We keep our distance, Safer says, but we'll be behind you. You grunt and walk off. One supply. Mm. A couple of Raven scouts take off to check out the cluster of tents ahead. Refugees from Olmsdal, one of them says upon returning. They've got a sizable camp and them and seem disciplined. They know we are here, the scout adds. No sense in trying to avoid them. We take the lead and approach the refugees. A hooded man with a red spear greets you. I just I, the first thing I thought of the red beard. <laughs> My name's Buck, and this is Lofen. You are Bolwerk of the Ravens, and is this your wife? You are confused as much by his question as by the fact that no one is with the man. Uh, who is Lofen? He moves his spear forward a foot. Lofen, my advisor of sorts. You look at Volker and snort. You're the second spearman we've met, who is more than a little touched. The man stares at Volker, a dangerous look on, her, on his face. If you're finished having your love, I'll tell you why I've come to you. Fine, but make it quick. I'm leading this large group of trained fighters and tradesmen from Ormstal. We are looking for a new home. We've done what it takes to survive out here, but they are starting to lose faith in me. You want us to reinforce your control? Uh, no! I want you to take cover. Lead us someplace we can live. Lofen and I weren't meant for keeping others alive. What do I get in return? Uh, for one, we won't kill you. <laughs> Buck smiles, but there's no humor in his eyes. We share the food we've collected and fight alongside you, should there be a need. He stops and confers with his spear. Spoiling you, Lofen is. We'll even spread the word of how great the ravens are. We'll take you as far as Bindal. Buck kisses the medal of his spear and smiles. You have my thanks. Oh, Lofen thanks you as well. So Lofen is his spear. Okay. The unyielding, the unyielding snowfall is proving too much for the humans who now vainly attempt to follow your large footprints. In truth, the sky and your surroundings lack enough contrast to know where you're going. And it's cold. Trees over here, Volker manages to say, motioning with her spear. The foliage blocks some of the wind, but does nothing for visibility. With no other options, you burrow burrow into the snow, cloaked in your bear fur. Darkness. Lightning. Someone pulling in the energy. Painful. That looked cool. Vork! Wake up, you damn bear! You're being robbed! You roar and shake off the foot of snow covering you, the unclear dream still vivid in your mind. 
Bug uses his spear, Lothan, to point east. Those clansmen you saved. They killed your guards and they're taking everything. Folka is by your side in seconds, followed by the spearmen. You sprint along the snowy path of the stolen supplies, straight into an ambush by the bandits, originally harassing the clansmen. Safer turns and smirks. What, it's just the two of us? Stealing from the ravens, you must have a death wish. Okay, I have... wait. Ulrich is starting. Okay, and then it's her turn. She can go as far as that, so she would hit him definitely. Then it's her. This guy. Oh, and he's staying between those. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. Okay, we will just attack. Can I kill him? No, I can't. Yeah, let's just do that. Was she hurting? Uh oh, that doesn't look good. Um, yeah, let's go here. We could save him a little bit. Oh, this is one of mine, okay. I can't hit her. Yeah, let's do that. You go there. And champion. Let's go for two. I don't know what she was doing, so let's just go for two. Ah, she was speeding them up. They can w walk f further. That's bad. Um, it was just his turn. He has only three left. I should attack her. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, pick sticker. What is that? 20% to crit adjacent allies at percentage. Okay. Nah, let's just attack. Actually, we could just kill her. Let's do this. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Ah, oh, it's his turn. Okay. Um, yeah, we could just attack her. Actually, we go here. So you're not too close to the others over there. Wait, three. And it's his turn. Hers. Wait. She. Yeah, let's go there. Wait. There we go. He doesn't have an ability. Okay. Then we go for... Full blow. Shit, armor. Oh no, health, actually. He doesn't have anything as well. Oh, she's using a lot. Yeah, she's dead. I knew it. Uh, can't move. We have to kill her. Oh, actually. Let's use his ability. And he's again. Alright, let's go here. Attack. This guy? Wait, who's next? Him? Yeah, let's attack, attack her, actually. Armor? Yep, let's kill him. She is going to shoot whom? Him. Okay. I could just kill her. Yeah, let's do that. Could 
hit him with two. Let's go there. Actually. There we go. Um, I can only hit him with one. Hit him with two. Hit her with one. Big guy is next, and he will hit him. Okay, let's just hit him. That's good. 90%? Nah. Let's go ahead and reduce his armor. Four health. I can't move to him? Really? Shit. I don't like that. So I can only hit that. Mm, yeah, another one is going to die. Three, four... He is next. Okay, let's hit him. Mm, only armor, that's okay. She is next. I have to reduce her health. Ah, 70%! Damn it! Let's go for armor. Or... Let's try this. I wanna see if this works. Ah, deflect. Damn it. He's dead. Ooh! Only armor damage? Okay. Um... We have to go here. Okay, there you can kill him. Yeah, you give it there. She is next. So, but I can't hit her. As much. Let's go here. Mm, I knew it. I knew it. Die. Oops. Hmm. Can't hit him. Still can't. Oh, I can. I can. Go oh, there. Well, I lost a few. Safer's wounds are great, and she whimpers in the snow. You nod to Falka, who dispatches the bandit, the bandit archer, with haste. This is what helping folk gets you. You roar. Grab all these supplies and bring them back to camp. You tell the ravens after hoisting a barrel on each shoulder. Did we just lose Renown? Damn it. So let's just continue. Tracks up ahead! A scout reports. Follow them a ways. Small camp, a few blades. Meat and meat. Maybe more. Um, take what they have. If they res resist, kill them. A dozen ravens set out a mix of veterans and new recruits. They rejoin a couple of hours later with supplies. You hear one of the fighters muttering, Takes the fun out of things when they give up their goods so easily. The 
miners have been through a rough drought. Not a bad place to recruit new blades. The old wanderer fights his way up next to you. Can't see a damn thing in this mess. Guess old Irings hasn't forgiven you after all. Um, shouldn't you have died already? I don't remember there being much to see here. Keep bringing up Irings and you cuff up more than flag him. <laughs> yeah, let's use this. The old man chuckles and cuffs. <laughs> of all the goods, of all the gods, I'm not sure why you picked that one to fancy. You stare at him and he shrugs. One of these days, you might learn to laugh at yourself a bit. Hmm, okay. All of these people are looking for food and a home. And I'm looking for ale. Is that too much to ask? I bet that Scout Tower already sent word of us. The text is just too quick. I can't read everything if I want to do it in a special voice. <laughs> The snowstorm is worse than ever as you arrive at the walls of the mining town of Bindal. Ach, Bindal, not Rindal. Okay. The gates are closed and you beat a fist against them. Open the vain gates, you shout. From the wall, two menders look down on you. Then recede. Soon, the gates open enough for a half, for a half dozen well-trained guards to greet you. Their one-eyed captain points and says, Just you. Volker steps to your side. Not alone, she says. Um, she comes with me. The captain takes a moment to assess the situation and nods. Before following him through the gates, you bark commands to other ravens to stay close and vigilant. Inside the small gatehouse are the two menders from the wall, a woman with a fancy spear and a cup of a man holding a staff. Valka, Zephyr, it is the Raven Banner. So it seems. But why here? Why now? Just passing through on our way to the Blue River, but this blasted storm caught us. Hold on to come back this way afterwards for more work. But now we need some food and a place to hole up. We brought some people with us. They need a new home. I'm sure it felt like the right thing to do, but we are already beyond our capacity here. Uh, are you Bulberg? Bulberg Blood Axe. Hold your tongue, Nichols. What do you know about me, boy? I've heard all your tales. I can't believe. Your cold beer, cold bear cloak is real. Is it true your axe handles are made from your own horns? The older man now places a hand on the young man's shoulder. Wow, I never knew I was traveling with such a legend. You ignore her. Are you in charge here? Who's, where's the governor? The governor left for Abarang a while back with most of the fighters to settle a dispute. The Manda Council sent me to bring the people of Bindal west, as we've heard too many rumors of Dredge. More than rumors. We were in Burskot, saw Bellower. The Immortal Sunder? How did you escape? Immortal was a joke. He's dead. Nicol's eyes go wide in awe, but Zephyr looks pensive. What about the great rift that opened between Burskot and Ermstar? We managed. Zephyr looks like she wants to press you for more information. Enough! Open the gates for my ravens. Mercenaries will only panic the people. With everyone from Ormstal, it's all I can do to keep them from stampeding like wild ox. Fine, we'll camp against the leeward walls. Thank you. You have all the assistance with your shelter, a Valka, and her assistant can give you. Funny you won't let us in when we are on a job for one of your own. You snarl at Volker for saying too much. She shrugs in response. I'm not aware of another Valka being out this direction. Who has tasked you? You know. Zephyr steps back at the name and studies your face for a moment. Nichols, 
and with the guards see what you can do outside the walls for the people. I see to it, and make sure the ravens are comfortable. The young mender nods respectfully to Zephyr and grins at you and Falker before leading the guards through the gate. I'm inviting only the two of you to stay within our walls and enjoy a bit more warmth and comfort. Good, but try anything and my ravens will level this place. Then welcome, and no one is going to try anything. There's no need for such mistrust. Maybe, but I shouldn't have to tell you about my job from your superior just to get an invitation. My superior? No, you misunderstand. You have no job. The Valka known as you know is dead. Chapter 10. To speak in all tongues. And now we switch back to Alette and her crew, or clan. Yeah, and we are on the way to Abarang still. The once energetic Mender approaches, looking both worn and troubled. Look at that. He really looks older, way older. I I'm not sure I thanked you for the time to recover. I I've never woven a spell that strong before. Are you sure you're ready to move on? You look... I know. I, I caught my reflection earlier. It's a more mature look. The Mender grins, and a hint of his former youth shines through. And not everyone would have stopped for so long, especially with the ground rumbling like it has. Uh, we're all people in need of help here, so we'll get here no matter how long it takes. Your floating bridge cost a lot of lives. Do you know what's causing the ground to shake? We are all people in need of help here, so... Y you've grown up to really care about everyone here, Alette. It's a gift, and I hope you never lose it. He weaves a bit more on the armor. Have you given any more thought to my offer? I think some mending could really be benefit you. You consider his offer. Sure, it might really help someday. Yeah, I would like her to be a mender. That's really nice. I, th I think so too, and you already know more than you think. I doubt it will take me long to teach you the basics, but you'll have to practice as we go. I'm placing some patterns on your bow. Trace them with your thumb at all times. Practice. Memorize them. Understanding will occur later. And on we go. A group of two dozen humans, thin and dirty, step off the rough path to let the caravan pass. Please, a young girl says. Anything to eat? Her mother, eyes averted, pulls the girl by the arm to silence her. Um, Why are you all out here? Homes were burned, the man says, coughing. <laughs> Cowards didn't even show a banner. No, we're just trying to get somewhere safe to start over. You can join us if you'd like. Varied glances are exchanged among the group until a man says, Better than us starving out here on our own. They all tend to agree and thank you, joining the rear of the caravan. And I hope they won't steal from us or kill us. Easy boy, a clansman shouts as a yox cart nearly topples to one side. The tamped, the tamped path of the East Way Road is steadily turned into a cracked shamble. Looking ahead it only gets worse. Various chasm, chasms gape like open mouth. You glance back to Ivan who looks at you and shakes his head. The entire caravan comes to a halt. We'll be eating our belts before finding a way across this broken road. Especially with this many. And there's no telling how far we'd have to backtrack to head north. Then we'll head south, across the Ormsa, Ormsa riverbed. We can head towards Grunda and on west. Trickvi peers around Hakon's elbow before coming fully into view. Heading south is questionable. Are those people... Why do you say that? Maybe I spent a lifetime there. 
Plenty of things to eat under logs, but there's also people in the box. His eyes go white. The skald should hear my rhyme. But what's wrong with heading south? Different ways of living. Old ways. Stick to the mud and cracksmen are less bothersome. I think he's talking about the boggers, the rough, backward people of Swartzborg. Trigby frowns at Ivor. Words like that can find you swollen, filled with poison. He puffs out his cheeks and stares at Ivor. This is why Val tend to keep to themselves. Each human is crazy in their own way. Trickvy hunches over with laughter until he suddenly stops, sniffs the air, and marches away. Strange, but it's a fair warning. We are crossing over into lands most of us have never seen. Just because we left those dredge behind doesn't mean we won't have more wars ahead of us. If we had more supplies, I'd say we should stop for a few days and train some of these clansmen to fight. You consider your options. I don't want to risk running out of food. Let's just camp. We'll consider training clansmen later. We need to keep the few remaining clansmen moving. Uh, I don't want to risk running out of food. Are you sure? I know food is scarce, but if we are killed in a fight, full cards won't help us. We'll be fine. Just keep your axe sharp. Harkon looks at Ivar, who just shrugs. You prepare to turn the caravan south. Yeah, we have way more fighters than clansmen, so that's actually no need for more. Game trail! One of a few gathered hunters says, looking at a beaten path of grass. No telling what we might find down it, but it will fill some stomachs. Make a wager for who brings back the biggest kill. Yeah, let, let's do that. Everyone in the group starts smiling and tossing coins in a purse before heading down the trail. When it branches, two hunters sprint left and three think the center trail looks promising. You consider what to do. Search the ground for any clues. Follow the hunters to the left. Uh, okay, let's take off to the right on our, on our own. We choose to hunt alone and move down the path quietly. Sure enough, a couple of hares bolt for cover before you can sight them. But it's not you they are afraid of. The scent hits you as a bear crashes through the brush nearby. You inst instinctively aim at fire, scoring a shot no one will ever believe. You shot 537 pounds of meat. However, you are only able to carry 100 pounds back to the caravan. One hunter was wounded, but it will heal. The two others brought back a large boar, but you are clearly the victor. You give everyone back their coin and drinks are shared while the injured man man's leg is mended. Later, the entire caravan enjoys the stories of the hunt while feasting. Come on, morale has to go up. Yeah. Once you cross the Ormsa riverbed, the wind ceases to cut through the humid air. The darkening sky lets loose its rain and soon, fat drops of water turn the dirt path to sucking mud, slowing the caravan. Cloaks are pulled overhead and children and animals are wrangled near the carts. I was hoping to avoid visiting this part of the kingdom for at least a few more years, Prince Luden says. At least others have had the sense to abandon the cesspool. As arrogant as he sounds, he's right. There are very few signs of life around you, yet you still feel like you are being watched. The lowing of the usually quiet yorks indicates the beast's difficulty pulling the cards. You are up to your knees in, in it when a scout comes to you. Found some stone markers that led us to a few paths of solid ground over there. He, he points while shouting over the yoks. Uneven and bumpy, but easier than this. Stone markers? Yeah, the man says. Don't look natural, don't look like much of anything else either. Just some stones marking a path through the this place is all I can figure. You would ask Trigby, but he's nowhere to around. Probably out gathering mushrooms. Um... I'm just too curious to see what's there. So, lead the way. The caravan changes course slowly, but you soon see the low stone markers, some with sticks tied around them. The caravan picks up speed over the lumps of packed ground until a child screams. 
You rush back to see the boy being pulled out of a hole in one of the mounds you crossed. Inside you see blackened, wrapped bodies buried only inches beneath the bog. You are walking across a burial ground. Get everyone moving, Iva says. There's a chance we make it out of here without anyone knowing we were here. You start urging everyone on, but fear Raga watching you. They're all around us, shouts a man near the edge of the caravan, and we're stuck in this mud. Cracksmen have encircled you. Their leader steps forth and shouts, There is no price but blood for crossing through the land of our dead. Shouts ring out. Uh, shouts ring out. They are preparing to attack. Um, send Trickly forward to parley. Didn't I tell you easy isn't always easy? Trickly says. He looks nervous, a reaction you have never really seen from him before. What if they listen to me as well as you do? Uh, do what you can so we can ready an attack. Trickly looks you in the eye for the first time in memory. Best to only sleep once in strange places, he says before spinning on his heel. He marches out across the bog, hands held high in peace. Your fighters take this opportunity to get into a better position, shoving clansmen further into the center. Please don't die, Trickby. A few cracksmen surround Trickby. Oh no! While he addresses the leader in his animated fashion, the man allows him to finish before shouting, He's forgotten your ways! Welcome home, boy! Those surrounding Trickby pierce him repeatedly with spears before you can lead your charge. Shit! It looks like the force you trained is roughly the size of the enemy. So this could either go away, okay. The whole box seems to move with the approaching cracksman. Eirik, the warden from Strand, says, I know this sounds mad, but they are bringing battle-trained be bears. If we weaken one, I can make it ours. He smiles at your confusion. Ask the governor of Strand. They are helpful in certain situations. Um, ask the governor of Strand. They are helpful in certain situations. Harkon grows. We could lose our lives and he wants a new pet. You consider what to do. Okay, Eirik, but this better be worth it. We'll need to clear the battlefield except for one bear. Then leave the rest to me. This is crazy, but... Okay. The battle begins with Eirik smiling. Okay, now I have to have Eirik in. Alright, let's try this. Alright, we have two bears. Bears have... Oh, they only... They also have armor. Okay. So, let's take a look. He is first. That's good, he stays there. He will reduce the armor of the guy with the shield in, at the front. Oh, actually, I could just hit anyone. Um. We we'll go here, so that we can already make someone bleed. You go there. I went, you stay back, that's good. You go here. And Eirik. Uh, you could actually stay here. Yeah, let's do it like that. I think that's it's our actually. I need him for mending, so let's stay there. Here we go. Um, seven. Who's first? This bear is first. And then this bear. But he can't reach me, but he could. Okay, I have to, I have to attack the bear. He has no other choice. Oh, this is only armor. Damn it. Leave the bear to me. It's all for nothing if we kill it. Uh, the other bear is next. And he can go to the girl. Okay, and then it's this guy. Let's go here. Well, 
that's not good. He is next. And then it's this guy. He could attack, attack him. Okay, just to shield him a little bit. Yeah, let's go here because this guy will come down. Fain bears. What next? Mm. I should leave one for the end. And it's him, but he can't hurt. And then it's her. Okay, let's go here and use flail on the on this guy. No, no, yes. Okay, let's see. Who is he hurting? Him. Oh my god. Seven. You're kidding. Um. They are all clustered together. I need to hit somebody with lightning. Wait, how far can the bear reach? There. So I can go... F Three paces. One, two, three. Actually, that's fine. Okay, then I would hit those two as well. There, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay, let's go for this guy. Nice. Good hit. Eirik. What can you do? Capture a bear. Okay, this is a specialty. I need one willpower for that. Gives willpower to allies. Hmm. I don't like it. I don't like it. Ah, oh, shit. If I go to the bear, I have linkage three. But I need one more willpower. But I can use it at the end. If I hit him with four, he has nine. Wait. Armor? No, I wanted to reduce his health. Why did I hit his armor? Shit. Uh... Okay, it's the bear and... this guy. can't move. He's... I could move, actually, but he won't. Yeah. I need to mend him as soon as possible. Uh, let's go for flail on... Yeah, flail on the bear. He absorbs the hits? Really? Okay, we have to mend... Him. With 
as much as possible. Okay, should we hit the bear? Yeah, I think we should. This was armor. Hmm, that's bad. Actually, he could kill him. Let's reduce his armor. What? Why? Oh, it's a bear. No, I don't want to go for the bear here. This guy. I can't kill him. Yeah, let's do that. this guy come on um. okay we need one bear alive but then we can just kill this one but who is next Guy straight is next. Let's kill the bear. Uh, mend? Yeah, let's kill this one. I still need the bear alive, so let's just kill the guy next to him. Oh no, I can't do that. Um, sundering impact on him. And now we have to kill this, kill this man. Oh, I really I killed him? Ah, damn it. I can't hit him, otherwise uh, it's over, and I need to f catch him. So... What, what was battering ram? Knock the target back through multiple tiles, doing armor break damage. Wait, I don't have armor. Uh, he doesn't have armor, so let's just rest. Uh, Harkon. 11, that's too much. Um, then just go he here for some... Um Okay. Mend. Oh wait, how much does my lightning? No, that would it could hit No, it could hurt. Let's just mend his armor a little bit. Now, can he already capture the bear? Oh, I have to go closer? Okay. Whew. Baldringer's flame welcomes endless war. But why? Even though the petrified flame sword of our vile friends. Hmm. Okay, where are we now? 
Placed upside down in the ground, the petrified roots of a giant tree reach towards the sky. All the Val, including Ivar and Harkon, have separated from the caravan temporarily, giving Baldringer's Godstone a wide berth. The giant's presence is missed as you continue to feel watched. Aleo, what do you know about Baldringer? Oh no, search the Godstone for any, any items. Walking around the entire root system only takes a moment, but you find nothing of interest. It is as if no one has been here in a very long time. The uncomfortable, rainy settings urges everyone to rejoin the Val quickly. Damn it, I should have talked to him for a while. The rain finally ceases, but the wind picks up. You squint into the gusts and have a clear view of the vast plains ahead. There doesn't seem to be much out there, Ivar says. His tone conveys wonder and concern in equal measure. But there is a city, Grundar. The ground shakes again. Enough to cause the yoks to strain at their leads in panic. Out here in the plains, with nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around and no mountains, Harkon says in a weary tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the ground opening up beneath us. He shrugs at the look you give him. Grundar almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us too. In a field just outside of Grunda, the caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. Are those... Two horse-born hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look wounded, unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I have to get a closer look. Me too. The two of you advance a hundred yards, showing every sign of respect and peace. A number of clansmen push closer too. The male horseborn stomps a hoof repeatedly. The female, tail whipping, brandishes a javelin. Damn, the caravan is scaring them. Um, everyone, move back! Your sudden shout spooks the female horseborn. She throws a javelin which, spin which pins the ground near your feet. Several archers fire, but their shots are wide. Hold! No more arrows! The male says something in what sounds like a long stream of consonants. The female lowers her second javelin. We just want to help. The male's tail swishes. You? Help? His voice sounds strained, and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Yes, help! Oddleaf steps aside as you wave to Ivan for help. The female looks agitated. She speaks in their strange way. The male responds to her, then turns to you. Help! Roik and others! I'll try. This is certainly a first. The standing horseborn step aside, allowing Ivan to approach the wounded fighters. This is interesting with those horseborn. With Ivan and Juno tending to the wounded, Ro to the wounded Roek and other horseborn, the caravan settles down outside the scant town of Grundal. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return looking disappointed. They called us they called us outsiders, a woman says. They don't want us interrupting their wheat harvesting festival, but the merchants don't seem to mind trading. The clansmen soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn, some in awe, others in disgust. Alright, let's start talking to let's start from the bottom with Hogan. The blonde axeman, one of two twins from a small village near Skogger, is chopping into a fallen tree for no apparent reason. His swings look dangerous. Hogan, everything okay? He glares at you. Where's your brother Mogan? 
he left with the ravens, wondering if I should have done the same. Why is that? I followed your father a long way, and now you. And for what? My brother's gone. My wife and children are frightened of everything around them, including me. I tell them this constant fighting is only for time, but it's changing me. I see it in their eyes, in my own reflection. I thought I was doing it to protect them, but if they think I'm a monster, what's the point? Uh, Smyfer, maybe you should hang up your shield and axe. They'll appreciate what you're doing someday. They will appreciate what you're doing someday. I don't know. My wife said she needs a man who will hold her more than, than his ex. I think she might leave me. I'm not really sure where she'd go, but that's what none of my business. Just tell me this caravan would fall apart without me fighting in the shield wall, and I'll stay armed. Um. Uh, oh, should he keep fighting? Or should he be with his family? I like his flail, but I have other fighters. Oh, let's 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 let, let him be with his family. Be with his family. Hogan sighs with relief and nods. Well, I'll still be around, but I'll be busy playing with my kids. Thanks a lot, and be safe out there when you're fighting. Yeah, I think this is a better choice. Family comes first. Ludin. The prince is acting even more standoffish than usual. You and Ivar have caught him staring ahead and twisting the ring on his finger over and over. Yosa quietly stands nearby. Glad to be heading home. Ludin turns to the two of you and offers a polite smile. Even after the chasm, would it surprise you if I said no? I thought you hated being so far from Arboring. Is there anything you actually like? Is there anything you actually like? Is that the way you see me? As some pouting near-do-well of a prince? Um, actually, yeah. He paused briefly before shrugging and Ilsa chuckles. Then maybe I need to try harder to change that. This is also different for me. You, Ivar and Ursa are stunned to hear the prince talk this way. I've grown up in comfort and trained with scholars and fighters. I've never known anything else. Saying stuff like that won't make you any friends in this caravan. But that's just it. Among these clansmen, I've seen the differences. I think I understand them a bit more. Uh, oh yeah? What exactly do you understand? It seems they know just a little about the things I know as I do about the things they know. For instance, they know almost nothing about the kingdom's economy, and I know very little about making the things they sell. I know the trade routes, but they know trade. You've never seen the prince this animated, but then his face falls. I just don't think the king will appreciate my knowledge. Ilsa will agree my father is not what you call open-minded. The king's a hard man. Has to be. But his son is his weakness. Um... The prince is the king's weakness? Don't listen to her. Watch your words, prince. What? I wasn't telling you what to do. An awkward, icy moment passes between the prince and his bodyguard. Meinolf was fearful of sending Ludin away, so he sent his two advisors to watch him. You are one of King Meinolf's advisors? Yosa gives you a weary smile. Regardless of who you sent to protect me, I had no say in the matter. Kings usually have to make tough decisions and stick with them. Maybe someday you'll see why. I know. I just don't think you care for my ideas on treating with peasant... Commoners, what would you like to be called? We're all people, Prince. Even you. You have a charming way of humbling me. Yosa rolls her eyes. Just keep an open mind about your father the way you'd like him to have toward your ideas. That's something I've never considered before. I'll think on it. 
As Prince Ludin and Ursa walk away, you feel Iva watching you. What? When did you become so full of sage advice? Since I started listening to you? Gods, don't start making that mistake. The two of you share a smile before moving on. Those two are a great couple. <laughs> so, let's talk to that guy. I forgot his name. I don't know if he even told me his name. Scathatch. Scathatch? I would say Scathatch. Thank. You glance at Ubin, who snorts and smiles. Scathatch thanking you for helping his friend Roeg. Deirdre's the other one, but she's not in the talking with Baal and Human's mood. You're welcome. I'd like you to meet Harkon. Scathatch's tail sweats, sw sweats his flanks and he bows his head towards Harkon. Val, Mans, same herd? No, but we are no longer enemies. I haven't seen Horseborn in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Val were at each other's throats. Um, what brings you so far north? Scathatch looks confused by the question, so Uben shows him the map pointing to Dalalond and Grundal. Food? Our planes? Break? Arkon snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses, Scrivener? His ancestors did, yes. But blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years before they were alive? You may as well accuse these humans around us for starting the Great Wars. What happened to Roeg? Roeg, a brave fighter. Protect food. Hit many times. Hit? Who was attacking? Scathatch says many things in his other language. Trigante! His eyes go wide and he stumps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was the people here? Here in Grundar? Scathatch looks where Hakon is pointing. He shakes his head and points west again. The Valking eyes Scathatch suspiciously. How do you know your, our language? Scathatch just stares at you. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Heard little trait with months in mud. I think he means our mock friends, the Crocsmen. Have you found the food you were seeking? Enough for time, my guess. Two others take to herd in south. His hoofs scuff the ground during certain words. Just those two? What about you and the couple? Uh, Skethatch, Roeg, Deirdre, stay. This herd help. We help his this herd. That might not be wise. Skethatch speaks quickly in his foreign language and kicks his back legs out once. Not that I'm a translator, but I'm guessing they are honor bound to return the favor. I think you are stuck with them. Akon looks at you and shrugs. No getting around demands of honor. What else? Let's take a look at the heroes. Skathatch, Roeg, and Deirdreu. Tramper, the horseborn charges forward and tramples an enemy, then attacks from behind. The enemy suffers strength damage during the charge, is subsequently stuck for one strength per tile, the horseborn move before the trample, and his left con and is left concussed, suffering 20% on his next attack. Ooh, that is great. That is great. Hit and run. The horseborn takes his normal movement, then can attack or take another action. Once the action is complete, he can move again up to three spaces. No willpower may be spent on the second move. This is awesome. Mule kick. The horseborn delivers a, de a devastating kick with his powerful horse's legs, uh, horse's legs, damaging the target's armor, sending him flying across the battlefield and leaving him stunned when he lands. 
Any other unit unfortunate enough to be in the path of the flying enemy suffers a violent hit as well. Be careful who is in the knockback path. This sounds like um, the battering from Iva. And yes, hit and, hit and run as well. And there are you. Poison tipped. The horseborn uses a javelin tipped with a deadly poison to make sure her enemy doesn't forget her after the initial sting of her attack passes. The ill target becomes unable to secure their ground, their own ground, and is able to be moved through. What? The the ill target becomes unable to secure their own ground and is able to be moved through. Okay. Poisons like this are often used against high-strength enemies to wear them down over time, or on a large unit that is blocking path to other areas of the board. The doses do not stack together, but a second dose will serve. To refresh the damage over time and keep the target afflicted. And free roam. While moving each willpower uh, by moving, each willpower the horseman spends allows her to travel two tiles instead of one. Interesting. They are nice. I like it. Cool. Alright. Um Yeah, let's just leave. Alright. Yeah, I bought food. Yeah. Now that Roex had a chance to heal, two of the horseborn are heading south to deliver some supplies to their people. What crazy ideas in your head, Scrivener? With the world falling apart around us, there may not be another chance to track down south. Um. Everyone's free to do what they want, but you'll be missed. Remember that when it comes to dealing with Ruga as well, if he wants to depart by the gods, let him. Then be safe, Ubin, and join us again if you can. You know where we are going. Don't worry about me. Just make sure you are alive to see this thing through to Arborang. Farewell. Ah, oh, he is going. Scrivener says a few more goodbyes before departing with the Horseborn. The governor catches up to you and asks for a moment of your time. His bodyguard is beside him, silent. It's not getting any easier, is it? It probably won't get easier until we get to Avarang. Quit fooling yourself, girl. The capital's going to be a different battlefield, but a battlefield nonetheless. Quit calling me girl. Then quit talking like one. Prepare for hard fights to be lied to. Prepare for the worst in others. You look at Ruger's guard, Dagger. Is he always this cheerful? The, the man says nothing, only occasionally blinking to break his stare. Listen, I didn't come over to insult you. Then why does it feel like that's exactly what you're doing? The governor is about to react, but calms himself. Get us across this wasteland, and try not picking up any more strays, will ya? He sneers in the direction of the horseborn before leaving you. A few of the weavers have been smiling more than usual lately, and now you know why. A Leo lets, leads children out from behind a cart in new costumes. Some have horns on headbands, while one red-headed girl wears a green cloak like yours. A boy wearing a red cloak is carrying an axe. The entire caravan gathers around to watch the performance. The young actors stand behind a short wall and discuss an approaching dredge army. As a black cloth rolls across the ground in front of the actors, a young man in red armor stands up and shouts, Bellowa. This is a, a reenactment of the Battle of Burskeld. Oh yeah, continue watching. A dark-haired girl holding a spear says, We'll get no help from the governor. We're on our own. A few people in the crowd laugh while Rugger stares at the skull. The young Rook, a lad at Val, run towards the fierce bellower, attacking and being repelled. Finally, the girl dressed as Juno hands Rook a silver arrow. Rook hugs a lad and shoots the arrow. 
Bellower roars. Stand and watch the ending. Bellower grabs Rook by the throat and growls. You sense hats. A uh, heat in the crowd turn. Nee, hat no. You sense hats in the crowd turning towards you when Aleo and a Weaver suddenly snap the caravan's banner in front of the scene like a curtain. As the banner lowers, the young version of you cradles the boy dressed as your father. The other actors stand in a semicircle around you and begin singing a familiar tune. The crowd joins in and an impromptu line forms with everyone walking by to lay a hand on your shoulder. A woman halts a young girl in front of you and a crowd of others. Caught her stealing enough food to feed a starving vowel, the woman says. Not the first time I've seen her at that either. The girl looks familiar. She's part of the thin group of humans you picked up on the trail. Um. Why were you stealing? Never know when you'll get rid of us, the girl says. People always get rid of us. Her mother bursts through the crowd. Stupid girl! These people were good to us! She says, but it's too late. Drifters! Come the angry shouts from the clansmen. Drifters are people without a banner. They are blamed for all sorts of woes, mostly undeserved. The Varl and clansmen alike run them off before you can make sense of it all. But you are left wondering what will become of them. Oh, that's too bad. Ahead, the caravan comes to an immediate halt. That's the second faint shoe this bloody beast ye has thrown in a, in a day, the yox tender curses. It will take some time to see to the yox, so you call for camp. While most of the clansmen sleep or lose themselves in drink, Yuno requests a moment to speak with you alone. I'm impressed so far, Alet. You've managed to keep your composure through tough situations. Thank you. Not to pain you with further comparison, but you remind me of your father at the Godstone of Straths. Determined. What actually happened there? Your father faced down his fears, walking through thousands of dredge to obtain the only weapon that could bring down Bellowa. That's incredible and frightening. I don't know if I could do something like that. The Valka gives you a maternal smile. Neither did I. You know patiently awaits your reply. Uh, why me? I don't understand how to get involved in all of this. Uh, tell me his death meant something. I can't do that. Rook's death was unfortunate, but his life? His life was very important. The people he brought here from Skaga, including you, and all the others along the way are being forged into what the future will require. The previous era of peace is over. And one of survival has begun. Abrang may be the best shelter for the coming storm, but the people there are soft, too dependent on a society that will no longer exist. Because of the dredge? Partially, but mostly because of a coming darkness that is pushing the dredge. Y you keep talking about darkness, but no one has ever seen it. You've seen the signs of its coming, dredge in numbers. The land breaking apart? It is a force unlike any other. I wish I could say more, but even the Mender Council is ignorant to this. Mm. Why me? Couldn't others learn to lead this caravan? The straight answer is yes, others could do it. But the clansmen choose to follow you under that banner. If you didn't appear worthy, you would be replaced. Uh, why don't you why don't you lead them? A Valka's life is one of knowledge and secrets. We help when and where we can, but it rarely amounts to trust from others. These clans joined your banner out of hope. They would follow me out of fear. If they end up in Abarang either way, what's the difference? Who they are when they reach Abarang is exactly why they are important. Fear will soon spread like flames across dry tinder in the town. Without this caravan's hope, all will be consumed and burnt to ash. I, d I don't understand how you got involved in all of this. At times, I think this is all my fault. At others, 
I'm not sure I could have stopped it. She sees your wide-eyed expression and attempts to clarify. How I became involved is confusing at best, but you and I share something in common. We are both learning what we have to do as we go. But only the future will tell if my role is villain or hero. Thank you. I should get back to helping the others. Before you go, there's one thing I must address with you. The serpent. The chasm at Orm's dull and the tremors in the ground concern me a great deal. Yeah, me too. Should that incredible creature ever resurface, do not attempt to stop it. It would take power unseen in ages to affect the serpent. If you see it, run. Her words chill you as you find yourself nodding to her command. Yeah, I would definitely run. A scout runs up to you. There's a woman tied to a tree up ahead. Got four guards watching her. The strange news draws a good deal of attention from the caravan. The bound woman is ranting and spitting at the four guards when you arrive and ask. What's going on here? This year's a witch, one guard says. Plaguing our clan, making everyone really sick. But we caught her and brought her way out of here. The others not. She's to be tied here for five days without food or water, then cut loose. Been three days so far. But she'll die on her own after that long with nothing to eat or drink, you say. That's not on us, the guard responds. But if you want to set her free, we'd be bigger fools than you to get in your way. You consider what to do. How do you know she's a witch? Everyone looks at the woman who is grinning a toothless grin. She scratches at the tree bark and calls out the dead gods one by one. If that's not enough, the god says. She was seen squeezing mistletoe berries into water, th water troughs, thinking I heard that makes you sick. The other gods bob their heads in agreement. Let her go, she can join us, let her go and everyone go to their own way. I don't like it, but this isn't our concern. Irsa, any thoughts? Irsa smiles and saunters towards the tired woman. She says a few, a few quiet words to the prisoner and looks her over before returning. My suggestion, she says, burn her and the tree to the ground. You consider what to do. I don't like it, but it's not our Okay. Don't let her go. We don't like it either. Uh, we don't like it either, the guard says. But thanks for leaving us to it. As the caravan rolls by, the woman screams, curses and hexes, leaving most feeling sorry for her or scared. You notice the archer, Nit, because she is standing perfectly still, looking out into the distance. Let me guess. Let me guess. You see more grass? When she turns to you, she's not smiling. Dretch, she says quietly. How is this possible? You ask, knowing better than to doubt her sight. I thought we lost them at the, ch at the chasm. You can make out a dust cloud on the horizon, which means they can make out the one produced by the caravan, and it's heading the same direction as you toward Lundar. The Valkar walks to your side and says, I was afraid of this, the cracks in the ground along the Eastway Road. It's like the damn crevice at Sigaralm all over, Hakan says. The dredge were just pouring out of it. Does it mean they could, Yunu finishes your question, appear almost anywhere? Yes, but let's not panic the caravan, just keep moving. All right, before we go any further into Lundar, uh, there might be probably a fight against um, the, uh, the Dredge. I will take another break and leave the session like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.